Yesterday, we put out two Dumb Decisions videos. In a Dumb Decisions doubleheader, we talked about the Eagles-Vikings game from Thursday night, and a Giants-Cardinals game from 1974 since the two teams are playing each other this Sunday. Miss any of the action? Click the card in the upper right corner to watch the videos. And now, on with our feature presentation. When people think of the greatest return men of all time, odds are, this player right here is one of the first names that comes to mind. This is Mel Gray, and many would argue that he was not just one of the best return men ever of the 1990s, but one of the best return men in NFL history, period. Over his entire 12-year career, he made it to four Pro Bowls, including three straight from 1990 to 92, and he was named a first-team All-Pro twice, including the 1991 season, when his contributions on special teams guided the Lions to the NFC Championship and their first, and to date, only playoff win in the post-merger era. In fact, during that 1991 season, he quite possibly had one of the greatest seasons by any return men of all time, as he led the entire league in not just yards per kick return, but yards per punt return. He could truly do it all. By the time his career was over, he amassed over 13,000 combined yards on kick and punt returns. Today, this ranks fourth all-time in NFL history, but at the time of his retirement, not only was it first, but there was not a single player in league history to even eclipse 10,000 yards. And here was Mel Gray, all alone in the five-digit club, with 3,000 more yards than the next closest player. Mel Gray is nothing short of an NFL legend and a Detroit Lions legend, and there is a reason why he's on the all-1990s team. Because there were not many return men in their prime more fear than Mel Gray was. And aside from being a great return man, he also probably holds the distinction for one of the craziest touchdowns, considering the circumstances, in the over 90-year history of the Detroit Lions franchise. Consider this. He was never supposed to play in the game. He was never supposed to be on the field. For all intents and purposes, he was ruled out for the contest. And yet, despite all of that, he goes out there and just about wins the game for the Lions while absolutely hobbling, putting the team on his back in a big time way. If you want any particular story about just how great of a return man Mel Gray was, and how great of a football player he was, then this is the one right here. Because this is the story behind what might just be, considering the circumstances, the craziest return in the history of the Lions franchise. Before I talk about the actual return in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this game, as well as how the game itself was going. It's October 17th, 1993. It's week 7 of the NFL season, and as we're approaching the halfway point of the year, we've got an interconference battle on our hands over at the Pontiac Silverdome in Michigan, between the Detroit Lions and the Seattle Seahawks. For the main subject in our story, the Detroit Lions, this is a monumental game for them, especially coming off of a bye week and coming off of a divisional loss to the game before to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The good news for the Lions is that through five games in this bizarre double bye week season, they sit at 3-2. and two. By no means is it pretty, as they do have a negative point differential, and they did give Tampa their first and only win of the year at the time. But a 3-2 and two record is good enough for first place in the NFC Central. The bad news was that there was not a lot of room for error, as not only were they at 3-2, and two, but so were the Minnesota Vikings, and the Chicago Bears. It was an absolute logjam at the top of the division, with no one really showing any signs of separating, and there were eight teams in the NFC already with a winning record, when only six made the playoffs in each conference. The Seahawks seemed like an easy matchup on paper going into the season. A home game against a team that finished 2-14 and and had the worst record in football seemed like a penciled win. However, after Seattle won 3 straight and entered this one at 3 and 2, this game got a heck of a lot tougher for the Lions. So they were going to need some great performances all across the board to avoid dropping to 500 
and to maintain their hold on first place in the division. And one of the men that they needed a good outing from was this man right here. None other than their star return man, Mel Bray. Gray was still an excellent returner by this point in his career, as the 32-year-old specialist was showing no signs of slowing down whatsoever, especially when it came to returning kickoffs. Through the first five games of the season, Gray was averaging an incredible 24.5 yards per kickoff return. The league-wide average that season was 19.5 yards per return. So Gray was five yards above the league average. He had a great season returning kicks in 1992, averaging 24 yards per return, which was the fourth best total in the league amongst all qualified players. And he was actually improving on that in 1993. A big reason why the Lions won their last game at home, a 26-20 win over the Phoenix Cardinals, was because Gray provided a massive spark on special teams, returning two kicks for 87 yards which comes out to an incredible 43.5 yards for return if you're doing the math at home. Safe to say, if the Lions were going to win this game and have great field position, a great outing from Gray wouldn't hurt, especially after head coach Wing Fonz emphasized the importance of special teams, saying, I told the guys the games all start with either a kickoff or a kick return. I talked about the special teams being special today. And Mel Gray, when he was on his game as he had been throughout much of his career in Detroit, was a part of that. However, the problem for Gray was that he was hurting pretty bad as it was. Perhaps the most important body part the return man needs if he's going to make cuts and be explosive is his knees. Banged up knees will kill any football player, but especially a returner. And Gray was dealing with that firsthand as not only was his knee bruised, but he had some tendonitis to go along with it. Still, because Gray was a warrior, he was going to play in the skate. He was going to tough it out and battle through the pain. As for how that worked out, well, this was the opening kickoff of the game, and it did not work out well for him at all. In fact, this is about the worst possible way to start a contest. It's tough to do much worse than this. The opening kickoff, and he'd turn it over on a fumble and take a shot while doing so. In fairness to Gray, there was no instant replay back in 1993, following the absolute catastrophe of the first instant replay experiment throughout the late 80s and early 90s, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But if there was, there is no way that this is ruled a fumble, because the ground clearly caused the ball to come out. But still, Fans weren't even in their seats yet, and already, you've turned it over. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. And to make matters worse, later in the first quarter, Gray does this. The return doesn't count because of a penalty, but afterwards, Gray is down in some serious pain. Michael Bates was the man who forced and recovered the fumble on the opening kickoff, and he makes this first quarter a nightmare for Gray once again, by tackling him. However, this was one hit too many for Gray and his knee. The knee could not go anymore. He stayed on the ground for a considerable amount of time, and then had to be placed on the table for examination. There was no chance, none whatsoever, that Gray was going to come back and play the rest of the game. The knee was bad entering the game. Now, after some hits and after laying in pain, it was even worse. It's not worth it. Mel Gray is too important to this team to chance anything past this game. And after that play in the first quarter where Gray was on the ground in pain, the coaching staff knew Gray is done. And in a normal world with a normal return man, that's the end of our story. Man gets hurt. Man is ruled out for the rest of the game by the coaching staff and by special teams coach Frank Gans, who you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, and Man misses the rest of the game because of it. But you see, Mel Gray is not an ordinary return man. Mel Gray is an established veteran who is one of the best to ever do it. And he made it his mission to persuade Gans and the coaching staff to put him back in. Gans was dead set on keeping Gray out of the contest. 
there was just no reason to chance it. Especially seeing as he fumbled earlier already. And especially because this was an issue that had been plaguing him for a while now. But Gray was nothing if not persistent. And eventually, even after the coaching staff ruled him out, he was so persistent that he convinced Gans to change his mind. Gans didn't even want Gray playing a snap in the game, period. So this injury was just the icing on the cake and the confirmation that he got but didn't want to get. So whatever Gray said to Gans and company clearly worked. Because Gray, against all odds, and against everyone's best advice, was going to go back out there for the second half. Said Gray, I'd been dealing with the knee all week. It's been sore. There's a little tendonitis in it. And a couple of hits didn't make it any better. Special teams coach Frank Gans didn't want me to play all day. I had to work my way back in. He then continued, saying, I definitely had to talk my way back. Frank Ans wanted to keep me out the rest of the ballgame after I got hurt. I've been around for 10 years, and any ball player with a little hunger knows that to be successful, you have to play with a little pain. Granted, this was a fair amount of pain, but regardless, Gray was back out there. With the lines up 14 to 10 in the second half, after giving up a John Casey 19 yard field goal on Seattle's first drive of the half, Mel Gray was back out there probably against the coach's wishes, ready to feel this kick, dealing with a bruised knee and tendonitis, and only being out there by essentially forcing his way there. Again, none of the coaches wanted him out there. Not even his special teams coach wanted him out there. They'd regret thinking that in about five seconds. Make it a 14 10 game Detroit. Here comes Mel Gray in the line. Yep, a 95-yard kickoff return touchdown, his longest kickoff return touchdown as a Lion, and for the first time all game, the Lions were up by two possessions. A dicey 14-10 contest was now a 21-10 contest that gave the Lions some breathing room, which they'd eventually use to score three more field goals and win the game 30-10. Here was Mel Gray, who not even a few minutes ago didn't even think he was going to get back into the game. And now, he was the hero, scoring an all-important touchdown to power the Lions to a much-needed victory. The play was an absolute backbreaker for the Seahawks, as quarterback Rick Myra stood on the other side. On the return, he said, I thought that was a big play. We came out to start the second half and put together our first good drive. We wanted a touchdown, but we had to sell for the field goal. And then, they come right back and score on the kickoff. It seemed to take a little out of us. As for the return man himself, Gray said that this was a design play based on how the Seahawks were covering all day, saying, We changed the return. We had been running sideline returns, and felt it would be better to go with the middle return because of the way the Seahawks were playing. Safe to say, it was the right call. It was a better move and it completely flipped the game on its head. As Grace said, anytime you're in a situation like that, where a big return can change the whole excitement of the game, it's good. The whole morale of the club changed. It seems like the intensity gets higher. It shows the importance of special teams. To think that this wasn't even supposed to happen. Whatever Mel Gray said to get back out there after being ruled out clearly worked. I know that much. What's funny is that for as great of a return man as Mel Gray was, and trust me, he was great, as in 1993, he was still fourth in the league in yards per kickoff return average, this touchdown against the Seahawks was the only touchdown he had all season. Seriously. The only touchdown he had in 1993, despite his great play, was in the game between these two teams behind me, when he wasn't even supposed to be playing in the first place. If you're going to only score one touchdown all season, that's a pretty good way to do it if I do say so myself. Mel Gray is one of the greatest return men of all time, and this was just another example of that. We've seen plenty of players have great games before with an injury, 
and make an iconic play while dealing with some adversity with their body. You can learn more about one of these moments by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But from riding the bench as a precautionary measure to essentially winning the game on a back-breaking and historic kickoff return, all in the span of a few minutes. Mel Gray had a touch of gray on this one. Because on this day in 1993, the only thing better than Mel Gray's returning abilities was his persuasion abilities to even be out there in the first place. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.